I show off. Jack Moon! That was a lot of work. And the funny part is I only want a few pieces from those pallets. There's some maple and some oak mixed in here on the long pieces. These are gonna be the shafts of the hockey sticks. And I also pulled some wide slats. Those will be the blades of the sticks. I'm also gonna do a laminated version. Some of these sticks here that I have have lamination. So I'm gonna use some regular pallet slats to do that. And then the solid sticks I have seem to have a core with a veneer on the outside. Sandwiched in that is either fiberglass or carbon fiber. So I'm gonna add that variation into the mix too. So I'm probably gonna end up making over a dozen of these to take into account all those different variations. I'm also very curious to see the different species and how those feel once we get on the ice. And at the end, I can pick my favorite configuration out of all of these. So that's it for milling up the solid shafts. I just have them all clamped together now to hopefully keep them from warping while I move on to the laminated shafts, which involves... And then lastly, all the dust is removed from all the strips to ensure a perfect lamination. With the basic stick shafts completed, they're cut down to rough length, saving those cutoff pieces for later. And the next step is reinforcement. A few sticks get no reinforcement at all, but the rest will get either fiberglass applied to both sides, carbon fiber applied in the same way, a combination of fiberglass with carbon fiber strands, or the most complicated is that same combo of fiberglass with carbon fiber, but with a veneer on top, which is inlaid with the Carolina Shoe logo. We'll start with this more complicated one first.
Those extra pieces glued onto the shafts of the sticks were the offcuts from before. Those will reinforce the connection between the shaft of the blade and the stick. This connection is made by first cutting the bottom of the shaft at a very specific 42 degrees. Then I create a jig for my table saw that rides on the fence and allows me to cut a slot in the shaft. I do this in a couple of passes to get a slot that's about a quarter of an inch wide, but my table saw depth of cut maxes out at three inches. I need to get to four inches, so I make a very similar jig for my bandsaw to achieve that ever elusive extra inch. This takes a handful of passes, but the previous cut from the table saw gives me a perfectly straight and square reference surface to guide the blade. Next, I finally get to tackle the blades to the sticks, which are two layers of pallet wood bent laminated using flotation foam. Now with the blades and shafts complete, they get joined together. Each stick is custom fit to ensure a perfectly tight seam all the way around, and that shape is refined with a block plane until a perfect fit is achieved. The blades are then adhered into the shafts of the sticks using epoxy along with a few clamps to ensure a tight joint. These are set to cure for the night, and then tomorrow all we have to do is cut the blade profile, shape the taper, sand it, sand the profile around the corners, sand it uh, around the blades, sand it, fiberglass the blades, sand it, varnish it, sand it, and then varnish it. So what I'm saying is they're basically done. All right, that's a wrap on the sticks. Thanks for watching. Oh, hey, no, we're not done yet. Let's go to the rink, test these things out. We're gonna play some hockey.
<laughs> Good evening, folks, and welcome to Cape Cod. It's a beautiful night for hockey. Boy, we just witnessed the game that'll be talked about for ages. A legendary matchup between the rival Ticket Snobs and Jackman Works. Let's get to some highlights. Playing for the Ticket Snobs tonight, we had Alex, Derek, Mike, Oliver, Keaton, Graz, and Rob. And on the ice for Jackman Works, we had Dave, Michaela, Cam, Sean, Ben, Paul Jackman, and Pat Lapp in the net. Starting off the game, both goalies get in position. The ref Jimmy DeResta verifies that they're set and drops the puck. Sean wins the opening faceoff for Jackman Works. Pretty uneventful first period, except early on some very questionable defense from Graz, which ended up him spending most of the first period on the bench. I've been on Netflix. The ticket snobs are doing a great job breaking out of the zone and started generating some offense midway through the first period. Mike passes in front of the net to Oliver, who scores the opening goal of the game. Seems as though they have a weakness between the pipes there with Pat. Hopefully he improves as the game progresses. Nothing worse than a weak pipe, Jim. That's true. Jackman's defense was trying to keep the puck away from Pat. Here we see some strong defense from Sean after the snops enter the zone, giving the puck away to Ben by quickly picking his pocket. Sean isn't letting the puck get anywhere near that net now. That's what I just said, Jim. Jackman works still created opportunities, though in the offensive zone with Jackman and Ben creating a two-on-one, but Jackman makes a weak shot out of that one-timer. You have to wonder if that new artisanal stick is affecting his play at all. I believe that's artist anal, Jim. I'm pretty sure you're wrong. But just minutes later on the other end, Derek having no problem grabbing the snob's second goal to capitalize on a breakaway chance. And that ends the first period with the snob's up by two. Team Jackman came out with plenty of energy in the second period and tried everything to get back into the game. They had a great opportunity on a shot tip by Mike. Nice stick lift by Jackman to try to regain control, but he loses control in Derek's feet. Derek also seems to be losing his feet. A little bit later, Jackman makes a bad deflection off the boards directly to Keaton, who walks it out past Oresta, who seems to be playing defense for Team Jackman. The ticket stubs gain control of the zone. Mike takes a shot on the net, but unable to convert when Pat makes his first save of the game well into the second period. Let's see that again, Jim. You can feel the tensions rising as Jackman Works gets more chances. Derek tried to lay a check on Jackman, but just ends up squeezing himself out. Later on, though, Jackman returns the favor on Derek at the other end of the ice. And to make sure the message is clear, also lays one out on Graz. Do we have that from another angle? Solid hit. Another angle? How about in slow motion? Oh yeah, that's the stuff. This is going to be our Isotune slow motion moment of the game. Listen to that hit. A little bit of a dirty hit there, Jim, but he smart and timed it so the ref was distracted. Hopefully he'll have more focus during the rest of the game. Jim, I don't think that's in the script. The Jackman Works then has their best chance of the period using their full line. Michaela crosses the blue line. Deeks passes the puck to Ben. Jackman sets up a screen in the front of the net. Ben makes a play out to Sean, who chips it out to his brother at the point. All alone, and it goes just a little wide. Can we get another angle of that, Jim? May I get another? Me? I think it was Can. All right, that was a little further off than I thought. He's Give trying his hardest, okay? Yeah. Give him a break. The captain seems to have had enough of his team's goaltending and goes to have a word with Pat. I don't know if he's trying to get him riled up or what, but it seemed to escalate pretty quickly in the wrong direction. Okay. Let's listen in. What? You said you were good. You said you knew how to play. Well, I do back. my best. Every puck. You're Canadian. It's in your blood. You're not a real Canadian. Now we're in the third period and you can really feel the momentum shift. The coach must have said something powerful in the locker room. Do we have cameras in there, Jim? Great moments are born out of great opportunities. That is what we have tonight, boys. That is what you've earned here tonight. You know, I don't think anybody was in that locker room there, Jim. It's a bit bizarre. Team Jackman draws an easy tripping penalty after winning the faceoff. How's that feel, Jackman? Hey, Gross, keep those skates on. Maybe you can ride roller coasters now. This gives him a chance to mount a comeback with Oliver in the box. He seems upset. Then why is he smiling, Jim? That is weird. There's not much to smile about in the world today. Great moments are born. 
Moments into the power play, Sean does a beautiful no-look pass to Jackman at the point. Lots of space, similar to their play from earlier, but Jackman's shot actually makes it in on the net. Pass Alex for the first goal. Just minutes later, Sean takes advantage of that momentum when he finds himself all alone, sending the tying goal into the net. After that, the Snobs try to take back control of the game. Looks like Graz is back out on the ice. <laughs> and with him down, oh Mike skates a puck around the boards, oh passes it to Oliver in front of the net, who shoots it in between his legs. But look at that toe save by Pat! What a beauty. Pat Lap now standing on his head, shutting down the Snobs. He honestly looks like a different goalie this period. I guess the captain really got to him. The Tika Snobs keep up the pressure on Pat, generating a 2 on one opportunity with Pete and Graz working their way into the zone against Camp. A perfect chance in front of the net for Graz, but he can't seem to get his stick on. Oh, that's so not fair! Jackman works regains control in their own zone, Michaela passes it out to Jackman, but it seems like the ref is playing defense now for both teams. You hate to see it, Jim. The refs are all too eager to be part of the game these days. This the rest of the guy just wants his name everywhere, I guess. It's probably the adrenaline. You probably have a compound fracture in your leg. <laughs> Running out of time late in the period, Jackman works and makes their way up the ice. Michaela's pass is deflected, but Sean is there to complete the pass up to Jackman. In a race past the snob defenseman Rob, Jackman ends up all alone and outmaneuvers Alex to bring Jackman works into the lead. Got him. Jackman works tries to squeeze in one more play for that cushioned goal, but they don't need it. That's a wrap as Jackman works secures a satisfying win over the ticket snobs. What an unbelievable come from behind victory for Jackman work. You couldn't script a story this good. You really love to see his sportsmanship and tradition as all the players lined up to shake hands or put the presentation of the trophy. Good game, good game. Where'd you get that? Wow, this looks good on you. You too. The captain is the first to be presented with the cup. He attempts to hand it off to his assistant Cam, who refuses to take it next as he knows Pat Lapp deserves the honor for that literally unbelievable turnaround of a performance in that. That'll be a game talked about for ages, Jim. <laughs> <laughs>
Besides all of that, I have the game use pucks from this video. They're available in my store. I also have Jack and Works jerseys like you saw in this video. You can get one blank. You can get one with your name and number on the back of it. I may have spent all the income from this video to make the video. So are you a maker who plays hockey and would like to play hockey with other makers? If you're interested and you're local to me in Massachusetts or you're willing to travel, get me your email address. I'll add you to the list. I'm currently picturing this as being either an annual or semi-annual event. And lastly, I have a ton of people to thank. Without them, this video would not have happened reading these so I don't forget anybody. It includes everybody that was on the ice. You probably recognize Jimmy, Pat, Derek, Graz, and Cam. But there's also his brother, Sean, who was a huge help getting equipment for everybody. David and Michaela, Oliver, Ben, Rob, Keaton, Alex, Mike, and Kristen from Total Boat who ran the clock. My dad, Coach Jackman. Then we had my camera crew, Justin Maybe and Anthony. And last, there's Bob and Nick who built the best puck pyramid I've ever seen. Well, that's it for this one. This idea started as me wanting to build a few of these sticks and turned into this, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Oh.